Happy Friday, everyone. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean. And I'm really excited to guide you through today's Mind Body Connection, where we're going to focus a lot on stretching out the lower body, particularly focusing on getting some nice calf stretches in, getting some big stretches into our ankles. Hopefully, we're going to have time to get it all in. If not, today's class will just kind of extend into next week. We'll work up the legs a little bit. We are going to uh, stand up towards the end of the practice and get a teeny little bit of balance work in there. That's why you have such a wide shot. Uh, but we're gonna start in Sukhasana today, in easy pose. I do encourage you, especially if balance is a bit of a challenge for you, if you're feeling really tight, to bring, bring a block. Maybe even bring a book if you don't have a block, just to help you uh, in some of the hip openers that are coming later with a little bit of balance. Great. So set your space up for yourself. If you want to put on some relaxing, quiet music, if you want to change the lighting, turn on some candles, maybe a little aromatherapy, turn on some candles. You can actually light them. <laughs> Great. We're going to start in one minute from right now, just seated on our mat in Sukhasana. Grab yourself a couple sips of water. It's 11.15. Happy Friday, everyone. All right, so just starting off in that nice, easy pose. For me, easy pose, Sukhasana. I like to bring my legs in really tight, but you're going to do whatever feels good for you today. If you find that sitting cross-legged it brings your knees all the way up to your shoulders, I will do. <laughs> then now is a great time to already make use of your prop. Just sitting yourself up slightly can help you to relax those hip flexors a little bit. Just take a couple moments right here to start to come into your breath to slow the day down. You made time for this practice, so enjoy focusing in on yourself, on your breath. Notice if your shoulders are creeping up towards your ears and just use that exhale to relax and release your shoulders a little bit further away to allow those elbows to start to hang heavy down towards the floor. Maybe it feels good supportively to even draw your elbows back slightly, placing your hands, grounding them more on your thighs. You can have your palms down for a little bit more grounding. You can have your palms up towards the ceiling to help you receive a little bit more of the awesome energy that's out there. We'll spend one more minute right here just working to slow your breath down. Taking long, deep inhales in through your nose to help cool it down before it reaches your lungs. And then exhale out of your nose or mouth, whichever feels most comfortable and natural to you. Perhaps you've already started to practice some ujjayi breathing, a slight constriction of your throat by pressing the top of your tongue up onto the roof of your mouth. It can create a slight snoring sensation, but I encourage you to find the most quiet breath that you can. If someone else were in the room with you, even on a mat right next to you, you're breathing so slowly, so calmly, that with your eyes closed, they can't hear you, you wouldn't hear them. Back to those big full belly breaths. If you find that your mind starts to stray during today's practice, just go ahead and bring it back to this breath. 
I find taking the time to count the length of my inhale and really working to make that exhale one breath longer helps me stay present, stay focused. Start using those inhales to find a little bit of length through your spine, stretching up through the crown of your head. Notice if finding that extra little lift brought a big arch to your back and draw that belly in. Find some support of your core. Take a big inhale and on your next exhale, go ahead and relax your chin down towards your chest. Taking a couple of neck stretches right here. Go ahead and move on your exhale. Bring your right ear to your right shoulder. Take a big inhale here, just finding movement on that exhale, chin comes down towards your chest, the whole breath through, bringing your left ear to your left shoulder. If you find that one side feels particularly tense, maybe you want to hold out a little bit longer in that stretch, maybe you even feel the desire to bring your fingers to your neck to help you massage out any points of discomfort. We'll take about a minute right here. If you're feeling really open, if it feels good for you, and you'd like to finish out this minute with a little bit more of a full circle. You're welcome to explore that. And if it didn't feel right, you can just come back to staying in the front side of the body. Still changing around the direction of my circle each time my chin comes to my chest. One more time in each direction. Ooh, lots of crunching and cracking. Maybe you're hearing that in your upper body as well. Warming up, waking up for the day. Beautiful. Ground those sit bones underneath of you. Once again, pull your belly button back towards your spine. Find some engagement of the core. We're gonna use our hands and inhale, stretch all the way up towards the ceiling. Exhale, right hand comes down towards the floor. You can bend at your elbow. Maybe your forearm even comes down to the mat. As you reach through your left hand, make sure that left sit bone is still grounded. Inhale up, both arms come up. Exhale, left hand comes down, reach through the right. See if while you're doing this reach, Inhaling up. If you can even open that chest up towards the ceiling, so drawing that upper shoulder back slightly, instead of closing ourselves down towards the floor. Just a couple more times in each direction. Beautiful, your next exhale. Go ahead, relax and release both hands down towards the floor. Take another moment sitting up nice and tall and just get some big rolls in your shoulder. Allowing those shoulders to come up towards your ears, squeezing those shoulder blades together, finding as full of a range of motion of the circle as you can. Make sure that belly is still pulled in tight. Go ahead, change the direction of those shoulder circles. We're going to squeeze those shoulder blades together like you're cracking a walnut. Beautiful, relax those shoulders down. Take one more big inhale, stretch those arms up towards the ceiling. We're gonna bring a spine twist in. So inhale, find that lifted length. Exhale, turn to the right, your arms can come down. Inhale, back up to center. And exhale down to the left. Once again, finding what feels good for your body today. If you'd like to hang out in your spine twist for a little bit longer as opposed to doing a bit more of a dynamic warm up right here with a moving spine twist, you're welcome to. I'm using my forearm of my front arm to help press into my shin to find a little bit more extra twist on that exhale. Finding some grounding with the back fingers down on the mat. Take your time. We're going to get one more time on each side. Making sure you're just finishing up on the opposite side that you started, treating your body evenly. Last time, inhale those arms 
up, find a big stretch through your fingers, and then let's go ahead and cactus our arms down, thumbs towards the back of the room. Stretch those elbows gently behind you, really squeeze those shoulder blades together. On your next big inhale, stretch up towards the ceiling. Pull your belly in and exhale, rain those fingers down to the floor in front of you. Keeping your sit bones grounded, we're just gonna walk forward right here. If you're feeling any pain in your lower back, think about keeping that chest lifted here with your hands, palms on the floor. And if your lower back is feeling good and you're still grounded in your sit bones, then you can start to bring a little bit more rounding to your back, relaxing your head down towards the floor. Even if you're staying upright here to keep your back feeling good, you can still find that relaxation of your chin down towards your chest. Just find what feels right for you today. Maybe even actually pressing through your hands, palms to find a little bit more spreading of those shoulder blades, especially if you round it forward. Take your time, walk all the way over to the right as much as you can. I'm placing my left hand on top of the right hand to help really push that left sit bone down towards the floor, creating a big stretch throughout the side body. Also a noticeable stretch in the obliques as they're crunching on the right side. Take your time to use a big inhale and exhale, walk through center. Come on all the way over to the left side. This time placing your right hand on top of the left. You can really push into those hands, palms, one shoulder draws forward that left shoulder, sorry, right shoulder draws forward as left shoulder draws back. Still pressing that right sit bone into the floor, creating a crunching in that left side, lower rib comes closer towards the hip and a nice opening on your right side. Great, go ahead and walk your hands back to center. We're gonna pull ourselves forward. Next up, we got a little bit of cat cow. So get your hands, palms underneath of your shoulders, spread your fingertips wide like a starfish. If you're on a mat, think about lining up either your ring finger or your middle finger to be parallel with the side of your mat. And then really press into your hands, palms, make sure you're not sinking into your shoulders. You can even lock your elbows right here. Make sure that you're not hyper extending those elbows though. We're going to move on the exhale. So take a nice deep inhale right here from neutral tabletop. And then exhale up into cat. Really press into those hands, palms, pressing into the knees, maybe even pressing toes onto the floor. One more big inhale up here. And exhale, arms stay straight and locked, pressing through those hands, palms, chest comes forward and through. Find that big arch of your back looking up towards the ceiling. One more big inhale, exhale, find your movement. Work within your own breath right here, just being mindful, working slowly, still starting to warm up the body. If you wanna shake your tail a little bit left and right, just finding what feels good for you. Maybe shimmying those shoulders just a little bit as well. Two more breaths, let's come through each direction one more time. And then back into your neutral tabletop. All right, next up, we're going to get a nice ankle stretch. So go ahead and walk your hands back. As you start to walk your hands back, just take notice of what's happening with your feet. Do your best to have your toes pointed directly behind you. You're gonna walk your hands back and if that is uncomfortable for you to stay seated on your knees, you can even bring your hands behind you. In fact, hands behind you is gonna help a little bit with this next one because we're gonna get a big ankle stretch. Let's move one leg at a time. So go ahead, lift up that right knee and press the top of your right foot into the floor. Go ahead, exhale, relax and release it down. Inhale, lift up your left leg. Just once again, working with your own breath, switching from one side to another, getting a big stretch in the ankle. Maybe you can lift your knee a little bit higher. Maybe you can barely lift your knee off of the ground, just depending on how tight you are. If you run a lot, particularly, your ankles are gonna be really tight. Biking can lead to this as well. 
So just working to increase that range of motion. Let's go ahead, get one more on each side. Working with that breath and then walk your hands back forward. We're gonna come back into tabletop for just a moment. Go ahead, tap your feet onto the floor. Awesome, just to release any tension that might have built up right there. Keep those toes directly behind you. Next up, we're going to come into hero pose or big toe stretch. So let's start off with big toe stretch. Go ahead, walk those toes towards you as much as possible. So toes are pointing in towards your hands, palms, and you're working to get the balls of the feet on the floor. As you start to walk your hands back, towards your knees, maybe towards your thighs, you're really gonna feel the pressure build on the back of your feet. So take your time, we're gonna spend one minute just breathing right here in big toe stretch, and then I warn you, we're, we're actually gonna stay here a little bit longer, or I'm gonna give you another offer for a slightly deeper stretch. If you find that things become too uncomfortable, remember you can always bring your hands back down towards the mat. See if you can still lift that chest up. If you can really stack your head over your heart, over your hips. Find one spot to focus your eyes, just coming into your breath. We'll take three more slow breaths right here. One more big inhale, and on your exhale, go ahead, bring your hands back down towards the floor. Once again, uncurl your toes, tap them down on the floor. All right, so you have an option to come back into that big toe stretch, or you're gonna keep your knees close towards each other and separate your feet out slightly. Once again, make sure that your toes are pointing towards the back of the room. It's natural for your toes to start pointing in towards each other. That's a little safer than if your toes were to point out towards the opposite wall. So we don't want the arches of our feet to come towards the floor. And you're going to work right now to just walk yourself back and sit your hips down between your heels, depending on how tight you're feeling especially those ankles are really gonna limit you. You wanna keep those knees down towards the floor though. So unlike that ankle stretch where we started with of lifting that knee up off of the floor, keeping those knees down and keeping those toes pointed directly behind you, really deep stretch into those ankles right here. Find one spot to relax your eyes. We're just gonna stay lifted in this one. Take two more breaths right here. Okay, on your next exhale, begin to walk yourself forward. And then we're just gonna, you can, you can tap those feet out again. If you want to, we're just gonna shift over to bring our glutes back towards the floor and swing those legs out in front of us. I'll turn it this way, so no, I'm gonna stay in this direction. Okay, so here we are in Caterpillar. You might have already just noticed that as we came into Caterpillar, instead of keeping my hips in front of my body, I took an active moment to walk my glutes back to find that beautiful little hinge of the lower back to keep our spines feeling good. Just gonna tuck my shirt in like a winner, like a winner. Awesome, so if your hamstrings are really tight already, just being here in some sort of a caterpillar forward fold might be really uncomfortable. You can always take a slight bend in your knee and then still work to find this hinge forward of your hips, keeping those shoulders relaxed away from your ears. If you're feeling good and your legs are straight, flex those toes back towards your face and take an additional forward hinge Keep those elbows hanging heavy down towards the floor. We'll take three breaths right here. Okay, 
and then use that exhale to gently walk yourself back up. From here, we're going to do a little half lotus. So get started with that right leg, keeping your left leg straight in front of you. You're going to take your right leg and you're going to work to bring the sole of the foot as high up towards your hip flexor as you can. Now if you're feeling really tight, you might just be sitting in a little half square pose and that's okay. Maybe you're so tight that all you can do is cross one leg over the other and that's fine as well. Feel free to use your hand to really pull that leg in. Once again, work to find a slight forward hinge and do what feels right for your body today. I do feel a lot of squeezing and stimulation throughout my left, sorry, right leg, but there's no pain in the knee. So just work to avoid that pain in the knee. If you can't, then come into a little bit more of an open posture with the sole of your right foot touching your left leg. Don't worry, we're just doing half lotus today. No full lotus. Work to find that lift through your spine to pull that belly in. Can you flex your left toes back towards your face as well? Getting a nice little massage in the quad right now by the upper foot that's pressing into it. Take one more deep inhale. And on your exhale, let's slowly, gently change, extend your right foot out, take a moment, you can bob your knees, windshield wipe your feet. Go ahead, keep that right leg straight, find that lift with your chest, maybe even already coming into a slight forward hinge, and then we're going to fold the left leg in. Remember, both sides of the body are not the same. You'll probably find that it's a lot easier to fold one leg in than the other. There should not be any pressure in your knee. So if you are feeling a pressure in your knee, open that foot out a little bit more. Maybe even take the, the crossing out of your foot. And if it feels good for you, you can come back into that forward hinge. Keep flexing your right toes back towards your face. Take a couple more breaths right here. I once took a statistics class and the professor asked us to write a couple of sentences. It was a statistics class, so I literally wrote two sentences. Change, go ahead, lift yourself up, extend that left leg out, and he said, I wanted more. And I said, then you should have asked for at least a few. Statistically speaking, a couple is two, and every time I tell you to take a couple of breaths, I think about that and I make sure we only take two. All right, so next up, we're gonna come into a nice little deer pose twist. So take your left leg, bring it into the right thigh bicep, and then lean a little bit over to the left to bring your right thigh back behind you. You can either be in a nice 90-90 stretch with the sole of the right foot towards the floor, or if you wanna bring it a little bit more in towards your quad, see if you can bring that foot back and then work to relax into your right glute. Taking a moment here, lifted, we'll take two breaths lifted, and then we're gonna come into a deer pose twist. So bringing your hands somewhat in line with your left thigh, we're gonna go ahead and walk them out slightly. Probably this little bit of a twist lifted your right glute slightly off the floor, and that's okay. See if you can even find a little extra stretch through this right knee to find a little bit more engagement of the legs. So I'm not just passively sitting here with my legs the same way that you would squeeze your glute to do a hamstring curl or to do a quad stretch is what I'm doing with my right leg right now, even though I'm seated and change. Go ahead, walk yourself back in. We're going to bring the soles of the feet to the floor. If you want, you can once again windshield wipe those legs and then let them fall heavy towards the opposite side. This time bringing the right foot to the left thigh. Remember, you can stay really open. You can bring it in and come a little bit close to already start to find a little stretch on the top of the thigh. Maybe I'm sure you'll feel it as you take a nice deep inhale and then bring your hands to be somewhat in line with your right thigh. So I have my left hand very close to that right knee 
and I'm working to draw left shoulder forward, right shoulder back, sending my exhale and my breath into that left glute, which I know lifted slightly off of the floor, but I'm still trying to apply a little bit of pressure, stretching through this left knee. So gently squeezing the glute. Go ahead, take one more deep inhale. And on your exhale, walk yourself back in. We're gonna take one more moment, kicking both legs out in front of us. This time, work to keep your shoulders stacked on top of the hips. Instead of walking the hips behind you, flex your toes back to your face. You can have your fingers here right by your side, pressing the pads of the fingers into the floor. Find a little lift of the chest, once more flexing your toes back, a little stretch in the calves as we hang out for a few breaths in staff pose. One more deep inhale. On your exhale, you can find a little bit of release, maybe walk those glutes back behind you. We're going to keep our legs straight and we're going to do a little bit of like namaste prayer feet. Okay, so doing your best to have your thighs together, to have your shins side by side, to have your heels, toes right next to each other, and just depending on the size of your legs, it might be a little challenging to get those feet all the way together. You can once again have your hands on the floor for a little bit of support. We're going to think about your feet being like a book and you're going to work to close your feet and then open them back up. So the balls of the, of the big toe are together and you're just working to stretch through your pinky toes towards each other and then release. We're gonna do it 10 times. So take a deep inhale, exhale, close your book. Inhale, open the book. Exhale, close. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open. I lost count. <laughs> Exhale, close. Inhale, open. Let's do five more. Close. Open. So finding that lift in your chest. Close. Open. Close on that exhale. Open on that inhale. Last two. Awesome. Take a moment. Let's actually draw those knees in. Once more, windshield wipe those feet. Plant them on the floor just to bring a little bit of release to that upper body, to that lower back. Press into your hands, palms. A little supported back bend. A little fish modification, if you will. One more deep inhale. Exhale, take your time. Find that curve, come on back out, and once again, extend your feet forward. All right, so last time we worked to close our feet. This time, not much might happen, but you're gonna wanna work to open your feet. So really bringing your pinky toes a little bit more towards your face. Your feet might separate just a little bit for this one. So once again, get those sit bones nice and grounded, get your legs as straight as you can. If you need to be on a prop, that's totally okay to take a little tension out of the back. Of your legs take a deep inhale exhale open inhale close open close so I even feel a little bit of pressure of my inner thighs knees coming towards each other just getting some big stretches into the ankles warming them up for some standing postures we have coming up next Let's do five more. Exhale, open. Inhale, close. Keep working to keep those toes pointed up towards the ceiling. Exhale, open. Back to neutral. Last three. Nice work. Take your time. We're going to roll over. Coming back into tabletop. From here, go ahead, tuck your toes under, send your hips up towards the ceiling. We're just gonna stretch it out for a minute in down dog. So I want you to really bring your belly towards your thighs, bring your forearms closer towards your biceps. Think about spreading your 
your glutes towards the back of the room and then feel free to pedal your feet. Really pressing into those hands palms, keeping the pads of the fingers on the floor, nice straight arms. Let's while in down dog, take a moment, look forward, look down, look forward, look down. One more time, look forward, look down and then walk your feet slowly up towards your hands. We'll take a moment here in this forward fold. Take as generous of a bend in your knees as you need to, to have your belly relaxed on your thighs, to eliminate that rounding and space between your upper and lower body. So way better to take a big bend of your knees, maybe even having your hands on whatever prop you have on the floor, if the floor feels far away, and then taking your time using your exhale to find those straight legs, then to find those straight legs and find this extra rounding in your upper back and reaching down. So be supported right here in your stretch. Allow that head to hang heavy down towards the floor. Let's take a moment here and shake our heads. No. One more moment, shake your head. Yes. Allow that head to heavily fall down towards the floor and slowly, gently roll yourself up. One vertebrae at a time. At the top, take a deep inhale. Bring those arms up overhead. Exhale, relax your arms down to the floor. Amazing. All right, so with your feet about hips width distance apart, if you're not entirely sure what hips width distance apart, is about two fist width distance apart that you can always measure between your feet. Your hips are frequently a little narrower than you think that they might be. Awesome. You can have your hands on your waist. We're just going to press up into a calf raise and slowly lower down. Stretch all the way up, press up, slowly lower down. Just taking your time, make sure you're still really pushing into the ball of the foot, equally throughout the foot, the ball, the pinky, the pinky ball, is that like a thing? I don't know, but they're both staying grounded to the mat. Nice work, let's get four more. Last one, amazing, whoop, cool. This is a good time for me to remind you that balance also happens with your eyes. So particularly for this next posture, we're going to try the first two parts of awkward. Um, I want you to find one laser focused spot in front of you and just do the best to create this posture with the words that I put out. All right, so take a deep inhale and press all the way up onto the balls of your feet. Imagine that there is a string coming up from the top of your head that's pulling you up towards the ceiling and draw that belly in. Having your belly in is going to help you with support. Actually, I lied. Bring your feet back down to the floor for a second and look down at them. Make sure that your heels are invisible behind your toes like a perfect letter H. Pull those shoulder blades down and back. Pull your belly in and inhale your arms up so that they're in line with your shoulders. Really stretch through your fingers. Get those triceps nice and tight. Take a deep inhale and on your exhale, sit on back into your heels. Really stretch your glutes towards the back of the room. It's okay if you start off with your belly towards your thighs. So really make sure the weight is in your heels. You're finding some some activation in your glutes and then use your next inhale to lift your chest up. Find some rounding through your back. Weight is still in your heels. You have about six inches between your fingers, between your knees and your toes. Take another deep inhale on your exhale. Sit down a little bit lower and on your inhale, keep your arms there. Just going to stress the shoulders a little bit as you stand yourself back up. Now laser focus on that one spot. Press up onto the balls of your feet. Imagine that string coming up through the crown of your head. Your back stays glued to an imaginary wall and you're just gonna bend your knees to sit down and hover in a chair. Don't allow your hips to go lower than your knees. They might be trembling. Press all the way up onto the balls of your feet. Keep that chest up, look up, take one more deep inhale 
And on your exhale, slowly, gently lift yourself up. Relax those arms down by your side. Take a deep inhale, stretch up. Exhale, belly tight, swan dive forward. Lower yourself down towards the floor. Inhale into a half lift. Exhale down into your forward fold. Another big stretch on the back of the legs. Remember, you can take that bend in your knees. Maybe shifting the weight from one heel to the other, straightening one leg and then the other, getting a little bit more movement in those hips. Uh, maybe pressing those hands palms into the floor if it's accessible for you, while still being supportive of your belly on your thighs to get a little more stretch in those shoulders. And then slowly, gently roll yourself all the way up. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, relax your arms down by your side. All right, next we're gonna try tree pose. You can do whatever kind of tree pose you want. Maybe you prefer to go for more of a vinyasa tree pose where you're just, we're just balancing right here. So you have the option to come into a somewhat simpler vinyasa tree pose. Make sure that you're not placing the arch or sole of your foot at your knee, either at your calf, or if you have the flexibility to keep it here, you can bring it to your inner thigh. A lot more challenging. I'm gonna go ahead and go for a Bikram style tree pose. So similar to that half lotus that we did on the floor, working to bring the sole of the foot all the way up towards your hip flexor. Then sole of the foot faces up towards the ceiling and you exhale and relax that knee down to the side. While you're here, whatever tree pose you're in, do your best to stack your head over your heart, over your hips. Take a little squeeze of the glutes, especially if you're in this Bikram one, working to relax your two knees side by side. Take one more deep inhale. And on your exhale, slowly, gently release. Let's switch weight and come to the other side. Now, if you're trying these Bikram one and your hips are really tight, you might find that all you can do is work to bring the sole of the foot towards your hip flexor, and maybe your knee stays really high. Maybe you still wanna keep holding on with two hands. Just take your time. With time, you'll find a little bit more openness. Maybe you can hold on with just one hand. That way you can bring your other hand to the center of your chest. Once again, remember balance is with the eyes. So find one spot to relax your eyes, relax your mind, squeeze those glutes, straighten your supporting leg. Go ahead, take one more deep inhale. And on your exhale, slowly, gently release. Inhale, arms up to the ceiling. Let's do a forward fold, fingertips rain down towards the floor. You can bend your knees if you need to. And then we're going to Lower down to the mat. Awesome, let's come into a big hip opener. Go ahead, bring your right leg forward. Do your best as you come into this hip opener to stack your knee on top of your ankle. We're gonna add in a quad stretch if you're feeling really balanced here. So, Maybe you're hanging out just in this hip opener. You got the weight in your front heel and your back knee is down towards the floor and you're pushing your hips forward. You can continue to just enjoy this hip opener. If you wanna challenge yourself and bring a little something towards that back quad, you're gonna keep your knee on the floor. You're gonna bend your leg up. Oh my gosh, feel a big time in the hamstring too. Big cramp. If you can, keep holding on to it if you need to. Oop, grab it for just a second, release it back down. Still trying to keep that chest forward, still pushing a little bit of weight forward. This can be a lot of pressure on your knee. If you find you might need to put a pillow under your knee or fold your mat up. Go ahead, take two more big breaths right here, either in your hip opener or adding in that quad stretch. And then slowly, gently release. Go ahead, switch your legs. This time, left leg comes forward. Take your time, shift your weight forward, and really notice what's happening with that front knee. Front knee is right on top of your heel, maybe on top of the ball of the foot. Hips are forward and we're square towards the front of the mat. So we're not opening up towards that right leg. Go ahead, draw your right leg up, reach back for it. Apply some pressure 
through your right knee down towards the floor to really activate that quad. Take a couple more breaths right here. One more, nice and slow. Oh, that's a big stretch. Relax and release that right knee back down towards the floor. Go ahead, bring your hands down towards the floor. Whew, bring those knees together, send your hips back towards your heels. Let's take a moment in child's pose. Walk those fingertips out as far as feels good for you, finding another stretch in those shoulders, maybe keeping your arms extended for the first two parts of awkward was a challenge for you. So relax and release that upper body here. If it feels like too much, hands can come in line with the shoulders or all the way back down by your heels to help separate those shoulder blades. Beautiful, bring your hands back in line with your shoulders, press yourself up. Let's come onto our glutes one more time. Coming towards the end of our practice, we're gonna finish off with some fire logs, another big hip opener. So let's start by taking our right leg and folding it in. And then we're gonna take our left leg and we're gonna do the best to stack one on top of the other. So I'll start off by deeply crossing left leg over the right. I have my left ankle, very close to the right knee so that as you change your breath and relax and release that right foot sorry right glute down towards the floor you still have some space you can still make some circles with those ankles if you're feeling really tight this knee might be all the way up towards the ceiling and that's totally okay just work within your breath right here can you flex your toes in towards each other uh, remember every day is different each side of our body is different if you just keep practicing flexibility is learned and you will get there with time let's take three more breaths right here can you find a little bit of length through the crown of your head finding a little bit of length is going to help you find a little bit more pressure of this left glute into the floor. Big stretch from the left glute knee through the thigh, but there shouldn't be any pressure in your knees. Awesome, change. Bring your hands behind you. Go ahead, kick your legs out in front of you once more. Bob, windshield wipe. Ooh, ooh, feel it. All right, go ahead. This time folding your left leg in. Cross your right leg over the left leg. Remember, you can be as leaned over to start with as you need to to find this deep cross. And then exhale to sit yourself down. Maybe you need to wiggle that bottom leg out a little bit to create your double pigeon or fire logs. And then flex your toes back in towards each other. Make sure that your ankle is not jamming into your leg. There's some space for movement right there. And then as you're ready, find that length. Shoulders relaxed away from your ears, shoulder blades seated together, low on your back. Two more breaths right here. Great work, use your exhale, bring your hands back behind you. Send your legs out nice and long one more time. Let's go ahead, lay down on our backs. Keep those knees bent. Lower yourself down slowly, one vertebrae at a time. Go ahead, extend your arms out into a T and allow your knees to drop over to whichever side feels most comfortable for you to begin with. Just taking a couple breaths in each direction of spine twist before we come into our final savasana. If you want a more passive spine twist, keep looking in the same direction of your knees. If you want a little bit more active twist, look in the opposite direction. Really work to melt that upper body into the mat. Maybe you can get both shoulders on the mat. Maybe your one shoulder is just kind of hanging out close to it and that's totally okay. Take another 
another big inhale. And on your exhale, go ahead, bring those knees back up towards the ceiling, soles of the feet are planted on the floor, flat, flat. Back regrounds with your mat, take a deep inhale and roll over to the opposite hip. Excuse me, weights. See if you can relax both shoulders towards the mat. Remember, option for a slightly deeper twist if you look away from your knees. Notice if you're really squeezing, tensing to stay in this twist. Exhale, relax that upper body into the mat as much as possible. Great work. Take your time, use your exhale to once again send those knees up towards the ceiling. And as you're ready, extend those legs out in front of you. We're coming into our final Savasana. We've got just a couple minutes to spend here together in final Savasana, but I encourage you to please give it the same attention that you gave to all your other postures. This is the time during this stillness when all of the awesome energy that you created just flows through your circulatory system, that freshly oxygenated blood is helping to break down any scar tissue. We really stimulated a lot of circulation, particularly within those ankles today. So take this time, find your stillness right here if your eyes are still open, especially if you've had your eyes open the whole practice. Even if you think it sounds really weird, close your eyes right now. And just focus back in on your breath. Take a moment to scan your body from head to toe and notice if you feel different than when class started. Whatever you're feeling, I hope one of those sensations is pride in yourself for creating this time in your day for your physical and mental health. You are making a difference. Just stick with it. The results will come soon. Keep it up. All right, you're welcome to stay in the Savasana for as long as you can. If you'd like to close practice together, take your time. We're gonna roll over onto our sides or up in a ball to a seated position. When you get there, go ahead, bring your hands, palms to the center of your chest, tuck your chin to your chest and take a moment to truly honor yourself and thank yourself for filling your personal cup with today's practice. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out. If you have any aches or pains, let me know. I will write a class for you. In the meantime, as always, I encourage you to think good thoughts, to speak good words, to do good deeds and eat good foods, to nourish yourself from the inside to the out. Take a moment, bring your thumb up to your third eye, your drishti, stretch those elbows up towards the ceiling. Lift your eyes to the imaginary sun I wish we could feel today and know that the light within me honors and sees the light within you. Thank you so much for coming today. Namaste.